Hey guys, Ivan here. Welcome to another video. In this video, we have a couple of very interesting topics to go over. And we are starting, as you can see, with this one. It's about Callum Moger, who just made his first YouTube video a vlog video for which Callum is kind of known for. It's been a while, it's been some time since he made a video and this is his first video since his comeback. When I started watching this video I felt kind of weird because this is not exactly Callum that we remember, that he was once like. He definitely seems different than before and while I was watching this video the first idea for the video title that popped to my head was uh, Callum Moger tweaking. Because he was acting weird, he was different than he was before the addiction. Uh, he was fooling around at this table, he was spitting this shaker, he was drinking, I don't know, he was, he was acting like a child. And I thought, wow, I mean, he is back, but what the hell is he doing? However, then, at the middle of the video, he was actually in the gym, training, and training legs. So he wasn't really getting just a bicep pump or something like that, he was actually training legs. Now, yeah, this is only one plate squat, and Callum was, of course, lifting a lot more weight before, but, I mean, he's back in the gym, that's a huge step for him, being back in the gym, and actually... He's looking really good, like he did not lose a lot of muscle, I'm pretty sure he's back in the gym for a while now, because as you can see, he still, he does look great, I think he lost more muscle before, I think he actually got some of that muscle back, now as far as training, he's not really training that seriously, but even before, even at his best, he was kind of like always, you know, chit-chatting in the gym, he was never really super serious about his workouts, especially leg workouts, he was never really known for having the biggest legs. Of course, he was training much heavier than right now, like this is hack squats with no weight, but still, if he just started, this is good. Just being back in the gym is a huge step for him, and making these vlog videos, it's a great start. He's back on the track, I hope he's not going to sleep again. From what I heard from other addicts, like, it's really tricky not to start using again. I don't know, I don't have experience with it, but I heard that many times. So I hope he's going to stay strong, and I really hope that he's not doing this just because he ran out of money. He spent all the money that he had and he needs to find a way to earn it again. I hope that's not it. He does seem clean, he does look sober, he doesn't exactly seem the same that he was before all this chaos, but being back in the gym and being back on YouTube is a huge thing for him, it's a huge step, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to looking, to watching, to following this uh, Callum and Moger comeback, I hope he's going to stay consistent and he's going to come back fully. Whatever you guys think about Callum and his most recent vlog video and what are your impressions, what vibe are you getting from Callum, what do you think about him right now? Whatever you guys think, make sure to tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, this next topic is about Roman Fritz. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Roman and how many of you are fans of Roman and how many of you are interested in this kind of topic, but this is something that I find very, very interesting, so I wanted to cover this uh, in this video. So basically, Roman made this post, uh, his update in his off-season. Now, the caption is what I found interesting. His physique looks like uh, the way it usually does. I mean, he's 280, which is kind of like his usual off-season weight, and he says he's thicker than last week. <laughs> then he says, I'm training twice a day, every muscle twice a week, high volume, eating low fat, high protein and super high carbs, basically doing everything wrong according to what everyone on the internet says, but I enjoy it, I love it. This photo right here is what Roman Fritz looked on his first show that he did last year after a three-year hiatus where he wasn't competing. I think he had a hip surgery and the last time he competed before 2022 was 2019. So it was about three years of him having an off-season. In the meantime, he had a hip surgery. So he wasn't able to train for, for a while, not for too long. So in those three years... He was doing appearances on different podcasts and he was talking about his approach. His approach is exactly what he's still doing today. Training twice a day, 14 workouts a week and eating a whole lot, a ton of carbs. Not eating basically any fat. 
so a lot of protein and all freaking carbs. Some of those carbs are complex carbs like rice and a lot of them are simple carbs like uh, carb powders, but obviously, as you can see right now in his off season, he doesn't look fat and he never looks not just fat, I mean he never gets out of shape, he's always like one week out basically conditioning, he's always super shredded. Now right here in the comment section, Brett Wilkin made a really good point, he asked him a question, why do you believe in low fats? And he said, I think once you supplied the essential amount of fat, there is no additional benefit from ingesting more. And Brett says, for sure, but why do you not opt to use more fats to put you into a caloric surplus, rather than just filling that caloric surplus with a massive amount of carbs? And Roman's response was, fat messes with my digestion, apple pie filling doesn't, also fat, no hormonal response, carbs, free insulin. Now, I am not the one to be giving out advices to these pro bodybuilders, but Brad Wilkin could be. And Brad Wilkin is coached by, let's say, second best coach in the world right now, Matt Jansen. So I'm sure Brad learned everything from Matt. And what he wrote in that comment really makes a lot of sense. Now, Roman, he is the guy that received... The biggest criticism that he received was that he wasn't big enough. That's the problem with Roman. He needs to add more size. And in the past four years, since 2019... He hasn't grown at all, he pretty much stayed the same. However, he's torturing himself every off-season, eating like, I don't know, 2000 grams of carbs and still not gaining anything, basically. Staying super, super lean, having basically shredded glutes year-round, always looking like he's one or two weeks out, one peak week out of a show and he obviously never really makes any progress but he says right here he's doing everything wrong according to internet but maybe internet actually knows what they're talking about maybe actually common people can see his mistakes even though he's the pro bodybuilder maybe maybe still what he's doing is wrong because he hasn't really been progressing for the past four or five years or so maybe the reason for him not progressing is that he doesn't get enough rest and we all know we grow when we are resting and i think he should know that as well i mean training twice a day every day and also not eating any fat to slow down the digestion and to get a lot more carbs a lot more calories sorry easily in an easier way I think that would just make a lot of sense. There is an example of a bodybuilder with incredibly crazy fast metabolism, and that's Dave Palombo. And Dave Palombo talks about this all the time. If you guys follow him, you know that he really struggled to put on weight. And what he did is he made a whole bunch of shakes, and he was having literally like 12 feedings a day, and all of those shakes and all of his meals were full of fat. Because fat doesn't take a lot of room in your stomach and you can pump in a lot more calories than you can from freaking eating carbs. So that made sense and Dave Palombo actually managed to get really freaking big. You can say whatever the hell you want about his genetics, he was never really blessed with a good shape but he actually managed to get super super massive, unlike Roman. So maybe, just maybe, I'm not an expert again, but maybe Roman should take the advice of some of these better bodybuilders than him, for example, Brad Wilkin, who won a pro show last year, and try a different tactic, try to get in more calories by consuming fat. Obviously, this high-carb, low-fat diet is not really working. He is not gaining muscle. As you can see, for the past, I don't know how many, four years, he did not grow at all. So maybe he could take a lesson from Brett or Dave Palombo or so many other guys who actually managed to grow despite their fast metabolisms. And as far as uh, Roman training twice a day, every day of the week... I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I I haven't seen anybody telling him in the comment section from pro bodybuilders to change that. So I'm not going to give him advice. But if you would ask me what I think about that, I think it's way too excessive. I love training and I personally would train every day, twice a day, whatever. 
but we all know that that's not the optimal way to to grow and Roman can see that in the past few years he haven't really grown at all so maybe if he wants to be one of the top pros if he wants to be a pro show winner if he wants to qualify for the Mr. Olympia that is definitely the first thing that he should try and change in my opinion whatever you guys think you can tell me down below in the comment section Next up, we have Nick Walker with a couple of physique updates. So this is the first one that he posted, a crab pose. As far as I remember, he doesn't do this pose on stage. And maybe he's gonna do it at the Arnold Classic because it does look pretty good. Now the caption here is interesting. He says, starting to get a bit wany up in here. So he says up, he doesn't say down. I think he's getting less wany down there. I think he did something about those legs, about those varicose veins, but that's not the topic of this video. In this video, first I wanted to tell you about like his upper body, I mean how his conditioning is looking right now, and he does look very good, he does look very grainy, he does look very veiny as well, his conditioning is really coming along, he seems really shredded for this point at about 5 weeks out of Arnold Classic, I think he's going to look amazing and you know, still he is the favorite to win this show, but... Some other people, however, disagree with that. For example, Bob Chicarillo. Buys and tries Instagram page shared this on their profile. As you can see, it's on the Olympia TV YouTube channel. So if you guys want to watch the whole thing, you can go over there. But let's read what Bob Chicarillo had to say about Nick Walker and Samson Dowd, actually, as far as Arnold Classic. So he says, Samson has the best physique out of all of them. That's a given. And if you know bodybuilding, shape, proportion, symmetry, muscularity, he's got every attribute that he needs. And in the comment section, Milo Sarcev, let's say Bob Chicarillo's biggest nemesis, says, every once in a while, you do actually make sense. And he tags Bob Chick. But Nick Walker actually replies in the comment section by saying, watch me work again if you check out the other slides you will see what else bob had to say and he did mention nick walker he says if samson and nick both show up on the game day at the arnold at 100 samson beats him 10 times out of 10 there is only so much nick can do he knows that nick is smart and then he adds that nick is gonna try to bring crazy conditioning and samson is gonna play his own game blah 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 and in the end he believes that samson is the one the favorite actually now me personally i would have to disagree with that i prefer samson's physique over nick's but i understand the judging criteria and i do believe that nick walker is still the favorite and he proved that to us by placing third at a mr olympia while samson placed sixth and here is another update of Nick Walker. And basically from what we saw so far from Nick and from Samson, they're probably gonna bring very similar uh, packages that they brought to the Mr. Olympia stage. So it's not gonna be much of a difference. I mean, it's really it really hasn't been a long time between these two shows, maybe like around 10 weeks. So how much change can you really make in 10 weeks? I mean, I believe that Samson has a bigger chance of making a more serious change because his conditioning wasn't that great at the Mr. Olympia. But again, if he plays conditioning game against Nick Walker, can he really beat him? He needs to play the shape game and it's the judges that are going to decide who looks better on that day. And I'm pretty sure Nick is going to peak well because he has Matt Jansen and they figured out their formula as far as Nick peaking. And now that they have more time than they did last year, because as you guys know, Nick wasn't working with Matt during the offseason, you know, I think it's pretty equal. I think these both of these guys, Samson and Nick, are going to make progress, but I think the result is going to stay the same. I think Nick is going to place above Samson. Yeah, there is the argument that Arnold prefers physiques that look like Samson's, because they are more, you know, Arnold-esque kind of physiques, you know, Samson and Andrew Jack, for example, but it's not Arnold who is judging the shows. Is he gonna have some kind of influence? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I do prefer those kind of physiques over the blocky, uh, freaky looking ones. But I think, I still believe Nick has bigger chances. I think he is the guy to beat, at least on paper. He is training really hard right now and his conditioning is looking pretty freaking crazy. So once again, I am expecting an improved version of Nick Walker. And if he fixes those varicose veins as well, then, you know, that, that's one weakness less. 
So how hard it is to beat this guy on that stage, it's incredibly hard. And in, in, in all likeliness, nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to beat him. He did win that show once. Yeah, the competition that year wasn't really that strong. He was competing against uh, Ian Wallier, who was 11 this year at the Mr. Olympia, and Steve Kuklo, who didn't even qualify. Uh, however, this time he has uh, big Remy, two-time Mr. Olympia champion. He has Samson, he has 212 champion Sean Clarida. Uh, Andrew Jack is there. So this year's Arnold is going to be insane. And still, all things considered, I think Nick is the guy to beat. I think he is the favorite. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.